Um, I decided to do a short video going through a few of the problems that you're, are going to be pretty similar to what you're going to see on the test. So I'm just going to go through a few that were on our review. And um, remember, the first thing on our test is to make sure you memorize stuff. And I know I have stressed that a ton. But spend time memorizing all your formulas. Okay, so I want to spend some time, first of all, going through our simplifying trig expressions. So if we look at number two, um, we definitely will see some stuff on the test like this. And when I see this secant squared minus one, that makes me think of one of our trig identities. So I know that one plus tan squared is equal to secant squared. And that's one of our Pythagorean identities. And the nice thing is, on this portion of the test, that will be given to you. So I want to see if I can make one of the sides look like that. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. And I'm left with tan squared equals secant squared minus 1. So now what I can do, I can go ahead and substitute that in. Now I want to go ahead and simplify this further. I know another way that I can write tangent is sine over cosine. So I'm going to think of this as sine squared divided by sine squared over cosine squared. I know when I'm dividing by a fraction, I multiply by the reciprocal. So my sine squareds cancel each other out, and I am just left with cosine squared. I think that on these problems, if you know how to use them, you're in great shape because all the problems are given, or all the identities are given to you. So practice these problems on your review with that sheet that has all the identities. Just make sure you know how to use them. The, uh, the second one I want to go through is number five. And number five is different because we have fractions. So the first thing I want to do is get a common denominator, which is going to be cosine times sine. So I'm going to multiply by cosine over cosine and by sine over sine. So I get cosine times secant. Now cosine and secant are reciprocals, so I end up just getting one. Sine times sine is sine squared. One minus sine squared should look familiar to us, because I know sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So, I can say cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. So I'm going to write this as cosine squared over sine cosine. My squared and my cosine can cancel out, and I know cosine over sine is equal to cotangent. Now, if I look at my options, cotangent is not on there, so that would be e none of the above. Next thing I want to go through are sum and difference problems. Now, for some reason on number nine, just so you know, um, that should be 255, not 225. But anyways, I want to focus on number eight. So on the test, I will give you the two angles. So I'm going to say this is sine of 60 plus 45. This one's easier because they're both in quadrant one. Remember, if they're in a different quadrant, I need to take that into account if it's going to be positive or negative using all students take calculus. So we learned our formula goes sine, cosine, cosine, sine. And like we talked about in class today, our sines are, I'm sorry, the angles alternate. So sine, cosine, cosine, sine. And I know my operation is the same. You need to have either the triangles or these specific trig functions memorized. I know sine of 60 is radical 3 over 2. Cosine of 45 is radical 2 over 2. Cosine of 60 is 1 half. Sine of 45 is radical 2 over 2. So I get radical 6 over 4 plus radical 2 over 4. I cannot combine radical 6 and radical 2 because they're not like terms. So I'm just going to leave it radical 6 plus radical 2 over 4.
Okay, we're also going to have some sum and difference problems that look like number 12. Number 12 is working backwards, and we had some of these on the homework, but the ones on the homework, were kind, some of them were weird because they weren't exact angles. So first I need to figure out what trig function it is, and I know the first trig function is always going to be what trig function is represented by this formula. My two different angles are 146 and 11. And since it's cosine, I know I need to take the opposite of that sign, so I get cosine of 135. Now, do not leave that on your test, because that is not correct. It's not simplified all the way. I know um, 135 is in quadrant 2, and it has a reference angle of 45 degrees. So, I would have 1, negative 1 in radical 2. Cosine would be negative 1 over radical 2 which we would write as negative radical 2 over 2. So those are the two different things you guys are going to have to do with sum and difference. Okay, double angle. This is what we learned last week. So first thing I need to do is figure out what quadrant is between pi and 3 pi over 2. And I know that is in quadrant 3. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this out. Okay, my angle is the one closest to the origin, and I know tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now, in this case, I put 1 over 2, but I know they should both be negative. And by the way, I'm getting that from this value right here. Tan is 1 half. I know they need to be negative because it's going down and it's going to the left. So I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem. Negative 1 squared plus negative 2 squared equals c squared. So 1 plus 4 equals c squared. So I end up getting that radical 5 is our denominator. So now I'm going to use the formula sine of 2u or whatever our angle is, is 2 sine cosine. I can use this triangle to help us figure out these values. So I'm going to write 2 over 1. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And I did not rationalize you, these yet, and that's okay, because when we multiply, they're going to cancel out. So 2 times negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 4. 1 times radical 5 times radical 5 is 5. Okay, now I want to go through a half angle. This is what we did in class today. So it's very similar. We're just using a different formula. So looking at this, I need to figure out what quadrant is between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, and that is quadrant 4. Remember, if I'm awful with radians, I can always convert those into degrees by multiplying by 180 over pi. So I'm going to go ahead, and I actually don't even really need to draw this out because my cosine formula for a half angle is plus or minus radical 1 plus cosine divided by 2, they already give me the cosine value. The thing that is important is since we drew our triangle in quadrant 4, that means half of it is in quadrant 2. And if we don't remember that, remember I could always make up any angle that's in quadrant 4, like 300 degrees. Half of 300 is 150, which is in quadrant 2. So. What that tells me, in quadrant 2, it is all students, so only sine is positive, so it's going to be negative. Okay, so it's going to be 1 plus 3 fifths over 2. 1 plus 3 fifths is 8 fifths times 1 half is going to be 4 over 5 because my 4 and my 2 reduce. I need to square root both of these. And I know I cannot have that radical 5 in the denominator, so I need to multiply by radical 5 over radical 5. So I get negative 2 radical 5 over 5. Okay, verifying. Um, there is one of these, and this one, definitely your work is important. I would say the one on the test is similar in difficulty level to this one. Um, so there's a few different things we could do. First of all, 
There's something significant about cotangent and tangent. I know that they are reciprocals, so when I multiply them together, they equal 1. Remember, my goal is to get both sides to be the same. 1 over sine is the same as cosecant. So I could say cosecant equals cosecant, and I would be done. Okay, last one I want to go through is number 23. And I know, I'm pretty sure this is the one that we had on our quiz that I gave back today, but I want to go through this anyways. A lot of the ones on the test are going to look like this. Um, in fact, why don't we make this look a little bit different? What if it said cosecant equals 2 over radical 3? Okay, first of all, I know I can really only work with sine, cosine, tangent. So, if I did the reciprocal of cosecant, it would be sine. If I did the reciprocal of 2 over radical 3, it would become radical 3 over 2. So there may be one on the test where we need to use reciprocals. So we need to think to ourselves, what angle has a sine value of radical 3 over 2? And that is 60 degrees. If I multiply that by pi over 180, that tells me that my first answer is pi over 3, and I know it's happening every 2k pi. Okay, we learned sine and cosine repeat every 2 pi. Tan repeats every pi. To find our second answer, we did two different things. Some of you might remember we did pi minus the first answer, so I get 2 pi over 3 plus 2k pi. Or you might have gone ahead and drawn it out like we did in class when we did that assignment together. If it's all students take calculus, I know sine is positive in quadrant one and quadrant two. So if this is 60 degrees, okay, that means that's a 60 degree angle. If this is 60 degrees, this would be 180 minus 60, which is 120. If I do 120 times, um, pi over 180, I get 2 pi over 3. So I get the same answer either way. Now, I know that this video was pretty short, but I just wanted to quickly go through one type of each question. Um, definitely continue working on your review worksheet. Check the review key. My, all my work is on there, so you can actually see how I got the correct answer. And I cannot stress how important it is you study your formulas. Okay, have a great night. I will see you on Thursday.